Episcopal Church in Columbia, Pennsylvania on this fifth Sunday of Easter. I am Reverend the Reverend Larry Bowman, who is the deacon of the Post Parish. The opening hymn is number 304. Christ, 
to be the way, the truth, and the life. That we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at his office, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please say with me Psalm 22, verses 24 to 30. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. 
By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and can testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the, the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Hymnal, from the hymnal, the graduate hymn is number 516.
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the memory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, please be seated. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, walk with us. As we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, heal our hearts, guide our minds, and lead us to a place of restoration. May we seek spiritual renewal. May our hearts and minds serve you and your truth. And may we bear fruit in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine. Abide in me as I abide in you. This gospel and our lessons today remind us to whom we belong with a clear visual image. These lessons call us into a new, new and wonderful way of living, a way that welcomes the other, that is not done alone, but in community, a way that starts with love. Everyone who loves is born of God. If we continue to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord, we are called to bear fruit and become disciples because we love. Although this isn't always easy. How can we do this when we are still hurting from this pandemic? How can we do this when the news around us leaves us spiritually and emotionally drained? How do we proclaim the good news about Jesus when we think there is just too much happening around us and in the world? The answer is never the same. It will vary from person to person. Still the text, the overall message of this gospel, suggests this simple response. We show up. We show up authentically as ourselves. We love others. We share the good news with others. We speak and act in ways that support this message of love. In our gospel, Jesus is addressing us. Twice, he says, I am reminding us that God knows our hearts. There is no need to hide from God, no need to hide those parts of ourselves of which we are ashamed, no need to use those ugly parts as excuses to stay away from God. Instead, this truth, this love, draws us nearer to God. It allows us to see those parts we think cannot be restored, and instead allows us to run to the Father, allows us to abide in God. Our epistle reminds us that if we love one another, God lives in us. God abides in us. There is no secret we can keep from God. But what is love? We could attempt to define it in many ways. 
We could provide examples of how we have experienced love, yet it would still not be enough. We could look at our relationships and draw from those, but even then we could not have a certain definition. But we could look to the one who sent Jesus into the world to die for us, to create a clear example of love, a different kind of love, this embodied love, the love this love that liberates, the love that clears our eyes to see the injustices of this world and empowers us to act in ways that seek the well-being of all. A love that makes us curious about systems that oppress. Now, for some, this may be difficult to understand. Perhaps a concrete example is needed. Imagine the following. You walk into any nursery or vineyard, and there you encounter life. You encounter different individuals caring and tending to the needs of every vine. The vine grower tends to them all, making no exceptions. The vine grower is aware of each of what each vine needs to bear fruit. The vine grower loves the branches. Similarly, God examples, examines our hearts, provides for us, and we can also remove those parts of ourselves that bear no fruit. If the vine grower worries about all the vines and knows that every branch and bear fruit, then the pruning becomes a special and necessary part of the growth process. Pruning will change the outcome for the vine, and it will change our outcomes too. When we abide in God, we invite God into our lives, however messy that may be. When we abide in God, we are empowered to seek our place in this world, loving others, living into the mission of the church, restoring all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. It is a slow and transformational relationship between the vine grower and the branches, just like the Ethiopian eunuch in our first lesson. We will not always understand. We may ask, how can I unless someone guides me? These relationships require honesty and require us to let go of all those parts we think we can hide from the world and God. How many times have we been afraid to ask for help or even embarrassed to ask, who can guide me? If we have learned one thing from this pandemic and the past year, it is that we cannot do this work alone. We have Jesus' example of love by being in relationship with people. We have Philip's example of love teaching, sharing about God and baptizing. We have the disciples' example of love by following Jesus, even amid their own shortcomings. All of these examples are needed. Our world needs people who are capable of this love because a church that only condemns and only sees sin would not truly be the church. It would not be transformed by grace or mercy. There would be no opportunity for restoring our brokenness. As God transforms us, we transform the world. Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador knew what it meant to be transformed by love. He knew what it meant to be with the people of this country and knew that speaking the truth would likely cause his death. He knew that loving the people of El Salvador meant that his actions words matter. He is reported to have said, 
If a man knows how to detach from himself and knows how to love, he is a saint. If a man speaks too much about holiness but does not know how to love, he is no saint. This is how we love. When we abide in God, God abides in us. God abides in our relationship. God transforms. God will allow us to bear fruit. Amen.
that they may be delivered from their distress. Please pray for those who have died. Robert Burgess, Nelda Schoonover, Ethel Lewis, Patricia Hash, Delphi Larner, William Spiker, Burley Adams, John J. Jack Moore II, Cassandana Moore, give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We give thanksgivings for the birthdays and anniversary of Kay Kittner, Lester Spencer, Jean and Debbie Weisbrot. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The people may greet one another.
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Forgive the God for the people of God. Take it in remembrance that Christ dies for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. Paul's communion hymn, number 439. What wondrous love is this?
have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have finished us with your food and the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and give us peace. Amen. 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 The recessional is hymn number 379. God is love, let heaven adore him. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.